Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound. Today I'll be taking a look at the Hamilton Takeoff Limited Edition. Uh, this is a watch that they really surprised me with when they showed this uh, to us. Uh, actually, at a preview of their 2014 releases before Basel, but then again at Basel. And I think a lot of people um, were really quite into this. It's a very intense looking watch. It's very extreme, very modern. Um, Hamilton, you know, does kind of a one outlandish watch a year. Uh, the other year they did this crazy thing with two faces. Before that, they did um, their kind of marine watch. Watch, which came in a gimbaled box, you know, so they always have one limited edition watch, which also tends to cost significantly more. Uh, the Hamilton Takeoff here has some very cool features. Clearly it's a chronograph, a bullhead chronograph with um, kind of very clear uh, uh, aviation, modern kind of jet fighting uh, you know, influences to it, the black and yellow um, very is very aggressive. Um, but what makes this watch particularly interesting and different is actually that it uh, detaches entirely from the strap and then can mount to a separate um, dashboard, like cockpit uh, regulated ISO kind of plate thing which comes in the box which we'll show you later and it'll snap right into that with the use of this kind of interesting design and some um, bearings that kind of snap it into place. So you get this cool dynamic um, watch here. I don't know how many people would actually put this into their cockpit but it is part of the feature and it's very cool how it works and comes off. Then you just have um, a really kind of badass chronograph. It's powered by the H31 uh, chronograph movement. It's, uh, you know, kind of Hamilton's specialized uh, version of uh, Valjoux 7753. Uh, it's an automatic, it's cam lever, it has a 60-hour power reserve, uh, which is really cool. Uh, this watch comes in at 3295 so it's much more expensive than most Hamilton's, even their other Hamilton chronographs, like the Pioneer we looked at last year. Um, so it is, you know, you're paying for kind of the novelty features as well as the limited edition. So this, you know, might really just be more of a kind of a fun watch to know about more than it is a watch to buy unless you're a diehard Hamilton fan. But there's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's uh, take a closer look. The case of the Hamilton uh, khaki takeoff is extremely aggressive and large. Um, you know, it's, it's probably one of the more intense case designs uh, I've seen. It has a lot of kind of additional detailing on it, screw features, notches, uh, graphics to make it look just really extreme and like something that belongs in the cockpit of a, of a jet fighter. Um, so it measures uh, 46.25 millimeters in diameter, which is very large, 50 millimeters lug to lug and uh, about 16.5 millimeters tall, which is obviously extremely tall. When you're looking from the side there, you can see you know, uh, how a lot's going on here. And a lot of this has to do with the modular design of how it kind of plugs into the strap and then plugs into a separate plate later. But when you look at it, you have a very tall bezel here. You have a central case that has a lot of detailing on it, it has these grips on the side, it has a lock indicator with arrows telling you which way to turn it. There's little screws here and there. Those are aesthetic, they're not actual screws, but they add to the you know, the, the look and the feel of it. And then you actually have a thin plate underneath that the lugs themselves are part of. Um, so, you know, you, you can see, I, I mean, I bet if this wasn't part of this, this didn't have the modular design, the lugs would probably move up to here because essentially there's a watch with a case back plugging into a separate thing. So there's a lot of additional uh, mass coming from that. But then the design is just really cool. I mean, I don't think I've seen anything quite like this, um, though we've seen plenty of military inspired chronographs and pilot chronographs, you know, they've taken it to an extreme. Obviously it's all PVD here too, which kind of, you know, makes it look even more intense. Um, really sharp angles on the lug, it's very extreme. The pushers here and the, crown, and the uh, crown just screw down are huge. Um, I really love the design of these uh, pushers, how they flare up and out. Gives you a really nice surface to push down on. Feels really nice under your thumb. And obviously the uh, bull head uh, positioning is also cool. Actually, I think that also helps with it since it is so huge when it's on your wrist, you don't have the crowns coming off the side uh, poking into your hand. So it's just a smart way for them to use uh, the movement to have the minutes at the top and the seconds down there. We'll look at that more uh, when we get to the dial. One really cool and unexpected feature is also that it actually has a rotating bezel here. It's a countdown bezel, as you can see. But so this outer area, you grab it and you turn it and it's a bi-directional friction bezel. Has has a really nice feeling to it. It's very smooth. It has a lot of resistance, like it fights you from turning, but in a way that just kind of keeps it in place and feels like a well-machined part. Um, it's very high quality. I have to say I really like that. There's absolutely no like 
jaggedness to it, nothing crunching in there when you turn it. It's a really smooth feeling. Like it feels like it's pro it's almost definitely got to have a lot of seals in there to keep moisture out. Because what's interesting is that as you turn this and it's turning the internal bezel, it's actually also turning the sapphire crystal. So this whole top part is moving. So there's definitely some intense kind of seals working in action there. Um, now I'm just pop it off of the case again, off the back. Quickly looking at this plate, you can see it's very simple. Um, has you know these notches in it to kind of keep the uh, watch plugged in and locked in. And the red indicator here shows basically where you start the watch when you put it in, um, and then it pops into place. Uh, but looking at now just this unit, you flip it open. They actually put a display case back there, which is just you know fun. Shows off the H31 movement, um, which has a little bit of decoration and definitely cool to look at. There's a lot of just really cool technical things here. I love these little bearings and how the bearings pop into this part. It's just very cool. I mean, it's just a, it's a you know definitely designer had kind of a field day when they were doing this watch and just did a lot of fun things with it. The dial of the Hamilton takeoff has a very, you know, intense modern pilot chronograph look to it. Uh, it takes kind of classic pilot military elements and just, I think, kind of sharpens everything up to have this feel that works with the very modernized case. So you have a primary index here of numerals. Um, you know, I mean, you might see something similar to this on Damasco watches or Sin watches. Um, I think Hamilton gave it a little bit of a twist. There's large numerals here. For the hour, obviously, skipping three, where there is uh, the date here, uh, an outline date window with a uh, black on white disc. I think that that works in this context, where since it's replacing the three, so there isn't like a hole there. Um, outside of that, then, is an index for the minutes um, with numerals every five and then little dots for the individual. Uh, the numerals stay oriented to, on the vertical axis, uh, making you know, everything very legible uh, from above. Then outside of that, there is uh, a, a chapter ring that is between the main dial and the rotating bezel. And that's a chronograph uh, sub-seconds. So, you know, when you start the chronograph, you can see, you know, where it stops. And obviously, since it's mechanical, you can read it to, uh, I believe, a, a fourth of a second there. Um, and it has a nice little feature here where every five is a little diamond uh, shape. It's just kind of, it's like a nice little, it's a little bit more intense than a line, a little more intense than a, a triangle. So I like that they put that in there. Looking at the subdials, you have two very large subdials are like large subdials so I'm glad that they executed it like this you have the minute register uh, for the chronograph below 12 then the active seconds at 6 um, both are pretty intense especially the active seconds since it has this uh, kind of <clears throat> very bold white line around it and then uh, second markers for every five seconds I feel like typically when you see a sub second dial they go maybe 60, 15, 30, 45 um, maybe they'll just have lines on them, but here they put them all in. So it gives a lot of actually weight to the lower half of the dial. Um, and then the 30 minute counter at top is just very clean and clear. Um, looking now at the outer bezel, you know, so it has this countdown bezel, which means it runs opposite of the minutes. So, you know, you would move it to the minute hand, you'd say 40 minutes to there, you know, so that's how the general idea of the countdown bezel works. Um, I like the design here. Um, I like that it's clean and you can utilize the uh, chapter ring below for the seconds chronograph as well as for that for those in the minutes in between. They didn't go overboard in adding everything. Then you have this kind of uh, intense yellow cross hatched marker for the last 15 minutes, um, which is really, you know, kind of what you're looking at. It definitely draws a lot of attention. It's a very aggressive detail on the watch. Uh, the hands of the watch still continue with that modernized pilot. So you have Roman sword hands that come to a little of a point. I like that actually. The the you know I feel like the hands that come to a little of a point speak to or an earlier design, but then the execution here is very modern with these angled elements, especially on the minute hand, how it's broken and it has that little angle cutting through that. I really like that. It's just a very subtle way of uh, changing the character of a classic design to be more modern. Looking at the hands on the sub dials now, they're both uh, polished steel. Hands, they are uh, just triangles. Um, they're a little reflective. They might be a little bit hard to see, but they, um, I, I like the look of them. It's, it's, you know, just working with that aggressive look. Then the chrono second hand um, is 
perhaps, you know, the coolest of the hands here. It just has this very uh, aggressive arrow shape in bright yellow at the tip. Um, it kind of hooks down and back. Definitely not just like a simple triangle on it. They, you know, made it more aggressive and just designed that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, overall, just a very nice version of a military uh, pilot, you know, chronograph watch. I like that even though this is a kind of a novel watch, the novel element really being in the, you know, disengagement of the case that the dial um, is just very nice, palatable, modern chronograph. Uh, not to be outdone, uh, you know, Hamilton here for their limited edition really went overboard with their uh, box. Uh, it's it's kind of insane. It's it's funny. It's cool, but it's uh it's, it is definitely over the top. Um, you know, so let's just take a look at it. So it has this crazy um, outer shell to it. You have these plate metals riveted on um, on the side of it here. Big nose step, which you know is something you think you'd see on the side of a of a jet plane or a jet fighter. You know, so it's really intense. Obviously, it's telling the story. This thing also weighs several pounds, but it's you know they maybe have gone a little overboard, but it's funny, um, and we haven't even gotten inside yet. So. Um, here you have this Hamilton tag, remove before flight, don't forget that, and you pull that open and that unlocks the box, and then inside of it you have boom, 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 the Hamilton takeoff uh, khaki limited edition mounted in this faux cockpit. This is the plate I was talking about earlier. You can remove this from the box. It has these hex screws on here. They're really bolted in, but with a hex key, you can take that off. And then I believe this is like an ISO standard um, plate that will plug into uh, cockpits. At, at Basel, they actually had a chunk of a Cessna cockpit that they had this in just to demonstrate that. So this is you know, a hell of a presentation here. You have the watch uh, mounted here. Very cool. Uh, the strap would be stored underneath. You can lift this out, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's crazy looking. It's a little novel. Like these these gauges are a little silly because they're so they're kind of fake and printed. It'd be extra cool if they had had you know a working thermometer and barometer or whatever. But um, you know it's definitely you know it's an exciting presentation. Um, if you have the space for uh, pretty over the top boxes, you know New York City eventually you need to get a storage closet for this kind of thing. But it's part of the limited edition. It's part of the story. Um, I think the watch itself is cooler than everything here because it's much more detailed detailed and refined, but um, it's fun. But, you know, you hear, you, I think this is really the most important part is seeing this plate in action. Um, you know, in an apartment, you could probably install this on a wall and you could use it. And then you have a, a really cool, like, way to use the watch when you're not wearing it as a watch. You know, you can keep it as a timer somewhere. Um, and it looks very cool mounted to that little plate. Um, I love the way it looks, actually. And I, I almost keep it like that as just like this wall mounted stopwatch. On the wrist, the uh, takeoff, as you'd imagine, uh, wears large. It is a very big watch at 46 by 50 millimeters, but it's not terrible. I don't think it's 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 at that outlandish like a you know a giant diver watch would be. Um, partially maybe because it's black, and that kind of always makes watches feel a little bit more compressed. But the angles, uh, the bull head design, keep it a little bit more um, just centralized on your wrist. Uh, the and lugs here do a good job of uh, curving down, so you know it doesn't feel like it's sticking out that far. I have a seven-inch wrist here, uh, just so you know. I mean, yeah, it would be hard to wear with a um, smaller than that, but I think a seven-inch up would probably work. The, the design of this watch, though, I mean, like, if you're looking for a loud, aggressive, brutal-looking chronograph, you know, I think this is definitely a contender. Um, you know, there's a handful of other watches out there to look at, but I, they did something very unique. The black and yellow, um, you know, has a very modern look to it. So it is a little bit more, uh, you know, unique perhaps than some of the other ones. It definitely has its own personality. Um, all of the jagged edges on it, the really intensely coin edged uh, bezel here. Uh, you know, it looks like a weapon. It really looks like a piece of equipment, which is the intention that you happen to be wearing on your wrist. Um, so it's very cool. Uh, clearly an aggressive sport watch, not really you know, one for the office, um, unless you work in a cool office, but uh, it, you know, it's just a, a, a brutal looking watch. Um, <clears throat> so it comes with a, a 22 millimeter strap here, black leather. Um, it has a cool design. So as you see here, there's a padding underneath the leather, which is common, but what they did is they angled it towards the tip. So you have this arrow pointing towards the watch. I've never seen anybody do that to kind of use that as a graphic element like that. And it's cool. I like that they did that. 
it's aggressive once again, but it you know brings the eye towards the top. It speaks to some of the arrows that are around on the watch, on the side of the case, on the chronograph. Um, so it's just a cool way to kind of tie that together. And then it has these little yellow stitches by the edge. Um, this is kind of funny actually. So you know it's stitched all the way around with black stitching, where they did this little yellow tack off here. And that's interesting because it almost looks like kind of a vintage style strap that would just be a single cut of leather with a little bit of a, a little thread loop by the lugs. So it's an interesting little mix of things. I think they're kind of just playing with the style of it there and, and doing so successfully. Um, the leather, it's beautiful leather. Um, it's actually backed with kind of an, an interesting material. Um, and I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest. It's a slightly rubberized material with kind of a waffle shape to it. It's probably good for um, sweat absorption and, and things like that. Has this really uh, brutal Hamilton buckle on here too, clearly working with the design again. Um, yeah, very cool. Uh, you could probably put you know maybe a nylon NATO on here too, though I don't think you'd want to bulk it up off your wrist anymore. But it's a good strap. I think they've made a good choice for uh, this watch. To wrap up, I think the Hamilton Khaki Takeoff Limited Edition is an extremely cool watch. It's a cool uh, showpiece for Hamilton to have made, and I really think you know that's largely the point of it. It's them doing something interesting, something um, you know different and kind of funky that other brands might not do, might not take the risk to make. Um, and you know, I, I think they did a great job of it. And I think there's a lot of things they can extract out of this, and I hope they do to make a more uh, sensible, practical, and affordable line of uh, modern pilot chronographs. Something that'd be a little different, I think, than what they currently offer. But if they got that great internal bezel in, these really, this you know, nice kind of aggressive. Uh, black and yellow and you know military style into an $1800 Smith's made automatic chronograph I think it'd be a very compelling watch as is it's very cool it's just novel but I think it's still going to appeal to a lot of people at $32.95 it's not appealing specifically to me there's a lot of competition around there and it's just expensive uh, but yeah I mean they did some really cool stuff here and it's definitely a fun watch to play with and hold uh, please read the full review and Warner Wound follow us on Facebook Instagram and Twitter thank you